Hi, everybody. I'm going to um, talk today about mental health. I'm uh, Dr. Pam Markham. I'm a psychologist. And of course, I find anything about mental health interesting. And speaking about CBD and what it can do for mental health, um, I wanted to do a little bit of research on that. Although I knew some things, I wanted to dig a little deeper. And uh, now nothing I say today is medical advice. This is just information I have found. Um, I'm a PhD, not an MD, so I'm not giving you, you know, medical advice in that way, but I wanted to present some of the research I've found for some of the more common mental illnesses. So I'm gonna start with bipolar disorder. Um, First, let me say, in my clinical practice, what I found was that bipolar disorder a lot of times was overdiagnosed. Um, it seems like sometimes when a doctor wouldn't quite be able to figure out where to put someone and what category, they would put them in that category. Um, manic depressive disorder occurs, they say, in about 4.4% of the population. It's equal among men and women. Um, the mania part, it's called manic depression or bipolar. The mania part um, is irritability, highly emotional. Um, it can't usually sleep, sometimes for days at a time. Impulsive, uh, they may do things that they normally wouldn't do. And poor judgment, those are just some of the symptoms. And then in the depressed phase, the person has low energy, they might feel helpless, hopeless, um, and suicidal if it gets to that point. So, um, okay, when it starts is usually late teens and early adulthood. Um, if it goes into the kind of psychotic part of it, the person can have hallucinations, delusions, or panic, okay? So the preliminary research on this, um, shows that CBD suppresses both the mania and the depression. Um, pharmacy companies seem to know this, and of course they're trying to get in on it, and they can't patent a natural substance. Hi, Christina. Um, so they're trying to come up with synthetic cannabinoids, and they have done that. Um, what they have found is they're less effective, and they have side effects. Um, CBD doesn't have that. In 2009, a study showed that CBD has an extremely safe profile in humans, which I think we all know. Um, it's not like a lot of medications, especially some of the ones for um, psychosis or bipolar disorder can be extremely life-threatening, just uh, not that much over a normal dose. You have to be really careful with it. CBD is not like that. In a 2015 study, they found, and this was a, a study about Parkinson's disease, but it applies to bipolar disease because what they found was CBD is neurogenetic. What that means is it helps regenerate and protect brain cells. So, you know, if you've had damage or things going on from disease or inflammation, it can help um, protect that from happening more, but also help brain cells regenerate. So that's a good thing for bipolar disorder. Right now, there's a study in Brazil um, going on. It's going to be ended in, they'll find the results in probably 2019 or 2020. Um, and they're looking at CBD as an adjunctive treatment to bipolar disorder. So they're adding it in. So that'll be interesting to see um, what their results are. But there's some doctors, uh, Ginspoon and Bacalar. They have collected a lot of case studies, and overall what they're finding is medications are less effective than cannabis in treating bipolar disorder, and there are many less negative side effects, if any. Um, usually people with bipolar disorder are given mood stabilizers, like lithium, or they're given antipsychotics, or even anti-anxiety or anti-depression depressant drugs, even sleep medications. Um, some, just some of the side effects of those uh, medications are liver toxicity, 
weight gain, diabetes, insomnia, seizures, extreme thirst, and many other things. Um, so again, this is not medical advice, but from the study, from studies that they looked at, what they found with bipolar disorder in the studies, what they were starting with 40 to 50 milligrams per day, and then they would double that after four days if the person is not improving. And they would keep doubling that and going up. So for bipolar disorder, it can be some pretty high amounts that the person might need, it sounds like. Um, but what happens is they do that at first. And then they may even get up to hundreds of milligrams. Like one of the studies, I think the Brazilian study that's ongoing, they're using 600 milligrams daily at first. And it's sublingual, so under the tongue. And they stay at that dose for several weeks. And then when the person is feeling normal again, they re gradually reduce that down to 25 to 50 milligrams a day, depending on what that person needs. And um, then they can maintain it and not have the mania come back. So you find out, you know, they said that you find out by trial and error what the minimum dose would be for you. Um, schizophrenia, I wanted to look at that because I have worked um, with a lot of schizophrenic patients, people who have schizophrenia, that's how I like to say it. I don't like to call them schizophrenics. They are people who have schizophrenia. And in 2012, in the University of Cologne in Germany, they did a study. And what's confusing sometimes with, with uh, cannabis in general with schizophrenia was they would find that THC sometimes can produce psychosis. So it was confusing until they studied it further. But what they found is CBD has antipsychotic effects. It even can tamper down the effects of the THC if it's paired with it. So in that study, 39 patients were randomly assigned to an antipsychotic or CBD. And what they found was CBD was as effective as the drugs, but without the side effects. Again, weight gain, diabetes. Um, with some of the antipsychotics, you get tardive dyskinesia, which is a permanent movement disorder. It's very sad when you see that. Um, but you don't have any of that with CBD. So that's the awesome news. Um, another thing here that I found really interesting, um, schizophrenia has both positive symptoms and negative symptoms. The positive symptoms, and that doesn't mean the way we think of it, like good and bad. Um, positive symptoms are the things you can measure easily, like, well, a little more easily, reporting delusions, hallucinations, you know, active symptoms like that. So CBD helped that. But what was very interesting was CBD also helped the negative symptoms of psychosis, unlike the antipsychotics, they didn't help this. And the negative symptoms are things like social withdrawal, um, blunting of pleasure, not in any ability to feel pleasure, lack of motivation, those things. CBD helped those. So I find that very, very exciting because when I worked with people who have schizophrenia, it's often hard to get them out of bed or to want to engage. Um, you know, and it's just very sad because long term, that's bad for them physically, not, you know, and mentally. Um, what was found years ago was, okay, this is really interesting. I hope I can explain it well. Um, we have an endogenous cannabinoid that Michaela was talking about the other day. If you haven't seen her video about the endocannabinoid system, um, you need to watch that. She did an awesome job. So we have an endogenous cannabinoid called ananamide, okay? And so we produce that ourselves. And in schizophrenics, what they had found was that in their cerebrospinal fluid, they had nine times the amount of it than other people with mental illness, okay? So ananamide, they thought, must be causing schizophrenia, like they were high on their own cannabinoid or something, okay? But this is a perfect example of what my statistics professor always yelled at us. <laughs> Correlation does not imply causation. Just because something's correlated does not mean it caused it. You, there may be another factor going on that you haven't been uh, paying attention to that 
that is really causing it. So what they eventually figured out that is that um, the brain was trying to produce extra ananamide to deal with the psychosis. Ananamide is a natural stress reliever and antipsychotic. Okay, so the brain was trying very hard to uh, make up for that and help with the schizophrenia, but it wasn't working. Seems like the ananamide was being not used correctly or was being destroyed somehow in the brain. Okay, so before it could be useful. CBD prevents ananamide from being destroyed. So then the ananamide can relieve the stress and the psychosis. Isn't that interesting? Um, obviously, big pharmacy knows about this, and they're not going to put any money into it because, you know, they can't make money on a natural product. I mean, if they do, it'll be something they can patent that tries to mimic it. But why, go, you know, why do that when you have the natural, which has so many other good effects and no side effects? So in the studies um, that they were talking about here, the... Um, the one study I looked at, they were using between 200 and 600 milligrams of CBD per day, depending on what the person needed. Um, and again, that's not medical advice, that's just what this study showed, okay? But I found that very interesting. Okay, now on to a couple subjects that I think most of us know a little more about, depression. Um, we know that it helps. Uh, we've seen it, we've felt it, some of it ourselves, but I just wanted to dig in a little bit on that. 16 million people at any one time in the United States are diagnosed depressed. Um, so a decade ago, about 11% of the population was taking antidepressants. Now we have 13%, so it's going up. Um, studies have shown there's a connection between CBD and our 5-HT1A neuroreceptor. CBD seems to activate it, okay? Um, this is endogenous serotonin, so it's inside of us, but we're not making enough of it or keeping it enough of it in the brain when we're depressed, and this, um, this helps that. Um, Post-mortem studies on depressed people and schizophrenics and after suicide have found endocannabinoid system abnormalities. So something's not working right in the, you know, in the body, in the endogenous, the endocannabinoid system. So that's probably why the supplementation is helping because they don't have enough or it's, you know, it's not working right. Um, also CBD affects dopamine, which has to do with um, energy, pleasure, um, those kind of things, so that's good news too. If you know anything about antidepressants, more of the more recent ones mostly affect serotonin, um, but one like Wellbutrin affects dopamine. Some people do better on one than the other, but CBD helps both, yay. Um, and I would say probably the most exciting part of what I learned about depression, and this was a mouse study, but I think we've seen it in people just as well, when they took depressed, inactive mice and um, they injected CBD, within eight hours, it had an antidepressant effect. Instead of three to four to six weeks with an antidepressant. So um, isn't that awesome? Uh, and no side effects. So in the studies I looked at, um, they said that with mild depression they had found 25 to 50 milligrams a day was what most people needed um, with a gradual increase. You don't start at 25 to 50, you work your way up. And I would think, this is me just guessing, that over time when you got it under control, you could probably back it down. But that's, again, not medical advice, just telling you, you know, what I feel like might be right. It's more intuition. Um, severe depression, 100 milligrams or several hundred milligrams a day depending on the person and what they need, and again, working up over time. So that's just what they have found in studies. Um, anxiety, okay. In 2010, there was a small study about CBD and anxiety, and they found that CBD reduced the symptoms of social anxiety disorder. 
Um, they had a double blind study where they did 400 milligrams of CBD versus a placebo and they found definite effects. So um, in looking at the brain and how it's functioning, what they're finding is that it's related to activity in the limbic and the paralimbic brain areas, um, uh, particularly the cingulate gyrus, which actually, um, I guess it communicates with those areas, it has to do with human awareness. So anxious people are hyper aware. We know that clinically, you talk to somebody who's anxious, they look hyper aware a lot of times and they're, they're scanning the environment, whether it be visually or psychologically looking for a threat. So that's obviously overactive. Um, so what they found was when they measured the brains of the healthy volunteer against the anxious person who took the CBD, the same areas of the brain were affected. So the, the healthy areas of the brain of the volunteer looked the same or similar to the person who's anxious who was taking CBD. Isn't that, isn't that good news? Awesome. Um, another thing they found was the amygdala, which has to do with fear, anxiety, and aggression. It reduced activity in that part of the brain. So you're not feeling as fearful all the time. Um, a 2015 analysis of previous studies found that, all, uh, looking at a bunch of studies, that CBD helped generalize anxiety disorder, panic disorder, PTSD, social anxiety disorder, and OCD. Okay, PTSD and OCD are no longer classified under the anxiety disorders in our statistical diagnostic and statistical manual, but we know that that's one of the main, one of the big symptoms. Um, so it's good to know that it helps those too. Um, it was interesting because looking at anxiety, again, it's the 5-HT receptor that it affects and CB1 and also the TRPV and many others. But the 5-HT receptor um, has to do with Buspar. When you take Buspar, which is kind of a longer term anxiety drug, that affects 5-HT1A receptor, okay? So that's what CBD does too. Um, obviously an advantage over meds is that sometimes with anxiety meds, um, if you get too high on the medication, you can increase the anxiety. And they don't find that with CBD. So that's great. Um, this, I just had a little blip here that's kind of off topic, but I found it very interesting. Um, there's a CBDA, it's an acid that is found in raw unheated CBD. So if it's extracted CO2 like we do, it would be there in the full spectrum. And this acid has a strong affinity for the 5-HT1A receptor, even more so than CBD. And the thing about that, what's great is it's a potent anti-nausea treatment. So THC and CBD also help nausea, anti-emetic they call them, um, but, but CBDA does even more. So. I find that very interesting, especially I wish I'd had it when I was pregnant, um, have eight children. I was always sick. The fourth one had me in bed pretty much the whole pregnancy. I was so ill. Um, so man, that would have been nice. But if any of my kids go on to have problems, I'll know what to help them with. Um, the last topic I wanted to go over was PTSD. There's lots and lots of other mental health uh, issues we could talk about. I think I'll do another video later about um, mental health in children and CBD. But to finish up this, uh, PTSD is in about seven to eight percent of the population. Obviously, if you isolate the military veteran population, it's much higher. Um, and what they found, and this is, this is just a survey they did of uh, veterans, and they looked at the medications they were taking versus cannabis and outcomes and what they were reporting, okay? Now, surveys are obviously not the strongest kind of study. They're not controlled, they're not double blind, you know, all that. And you're getting self-report, which can be skewed. But it's still somewhat helpful and it helps people know where to do, to do research. Um, 
when they looked at these veterans, they said that antidepressants they had been given, only 18% said that it made their depression any better. 50% said it made it worse. So what that tells me is those meds are generally not targeting the right part of the brain or the right neurotransmitters or the right things for what uh, the veteran with PTSD is going through. Um, they also said that narcotics, a lot of them had been diagnosed narcotics. They said that most of them, this is a majority, said that anger, irritability, depression, and sleep problems were all worse. 50% um, of this group had used CBD-rich cannabis, and 80% said that when they were using that, they used less alcohol if they were using the CBD. So, you know, there's a lot more. Oh, yes, yeah, there's one other part of that. When you look at uh, what it does to the brain, this part I just found really, really just so good. Um, CBD reduces arousal and avoidance. So in PTSD, these women and men are experiencing hyperarousal. They're feeling scared or anxious much of the time. It reduces that. It reduces the avoidance where they will avoid maybe going out in public because if they hear a loud noise or hear a car backfire, they're going to have a flashback. It reduces that. It prevents the long-term effects of stress, or at least some of them. Think about your body. If you're constantly in a state of fear, that's not good for you. Over time, the cortisol, um, the adrenaline, it wears out your organs. It's extremely bad for you. So this helps keep them in a lower state of arousal so they don't have those as many of those long-term effects. And then it also enhances extinction. This is probably the best part enhances extinction of bad memories. Now, what does that mean? Extinction means slowly, probably over time, there's less and less effect of the memories. And why is that? Well, think about it. If you're in a state of calm, when you have a memory of something bad or traumatic, and you keep feeling calm when you have those memories, over time, your brain isn't as upset or activated by that so it helps it fade fade away instead of having the memory when you're feeling horrible and anxious and you know that just keeps it at the forefront so that made a lot of sense to me and i find that very exciting um it also blocks reconsolidation of persistent fear memories that's pretty much what i just said um it doesn't help it to re keep consolidating with the fear and staying so strong. Um, so isn't that, that's just, just awesome. I just was so excited to see that part. I worked with veterans. I did my internship in a VA hospital and I really wish they could all have this. Hopefully someday they will. Um, another time later, I would like to do a little bit on addiction and CBD. Um, but I thought I'd just give you a little smidgen about that before I end. Um, this I found very interesting as I started to read. When we're looking at opioids, um, this is just the kind, you know, when a doctor prescribes it for pain, right? And there's a lot of that, and that's understandable. You have severe pain, you need something. But what they see in the clinic and people that are open to using CBD, um, opioid and cannabinoid receptors are present in the pain areas in the brain. They're both present. Okay. Receptors can be thought of as keyholes. When the drug, either the cannabinoid or the opioid, comes in, it has an effect, it, it fits in there into that keyhole, and it has an effect on the cell physiologically. It can change the cell. Um, these receptors talk to each other, and they found that administering opioids and cannabinoids together result in a greater than additive anti-pain effect. So what does that mean? It means if I give you a certain amount of CBD, you have X amount of pain relief. I give you a narcotic, you have a certain amount of pain relief. You put those two together, let's say this was five and this was seven, it was 12, right? No, when you put it together, you get 15. 
So it's more than what it would be either one separately or, you know, or added together. So awesome. So that's about pain. Um, but I do want to get in sometime to addiction um, and CBD. And then I would also like to later on do a video about CBD for children and their mental health, um, specifically ADHD, the autism spectrum, seizures. It's not really a mental health thing, but it affects it makes you depressed after you have to deal with that all the time and it's hard on the brain so i hope you all enjoyed this i'm going to look over here see if i have any questions hi sue hi danny um yes danny is my daughter she worked in icu she's a rn and she wished that her psych patients knew about all this me too um shirley Great. I'm glad you're going to give it a try. You're going to love it. Um, please, anyone who has friends or family who have mental health issues, or if you do, share this video with them. Get them into the group so they can watch it. Um, I just want to get the word out. We want to relieve suffering. We want people to know there's hope and they can feel a lot better. And of course, it's just going to help your overall health at the same time. Hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you later. Bye.